there's an epic battle in February. Arguably the most important sporting event in the world, where America's favorite athletes take center stage. The Westminster Dog Show. Two days in which man's best friend takes over Madison Square Garden for high pressure and high stakes grooming, pruning, strutting, and oral hygiene. But how could it be that what was once a wild, wily wolf has become a pampered pageant pooch? We have the facts. Thousands of years ago, wild wolves left the forest and decided to snuggle up to some humans. We found dogs useful for protection, hunting, and as a mobile food source when resources grew scarce. To think that in some countries, these dogs are eaten. Flash forward a few thousand years, and while most of us in the US have lost our taste for dog meat, many have developed a taste for specific dog traits. Most breeds we know and love today, and everyone from Lassie to Airbud, and all the Doge memes that followed, can be sourced back to the earliest dog shows and kennel clubs of only about 150 years ago. Miniature schnauzer. Sorry. You'd think they'd want to breed them bigger, wouldn't you, like grapefruits or watermelons? On May 8, 1877, a group of hunters decided to create a kennel club to show off their best pooch, the first ever Westminster Dog Show. Now the dog show is one of the longest continuously held sporting events in the U.S., second only to the Kentucky Derby, which started two years earlier. That first show was held in the same basic spot as this year's, Madison Square Garden. But back then, the prize included pearl-handled pistols. It was so popular that it drew 1,200 dogs and lasted a total of four days. The Terrier Group has dominated Best in Show since 1907, winning 46 out of 109 times, more than twice as many wins as any other group. The Wire Fox Terrier has won the most at 14 times. What a dog. Dogs at Westminster are judged on everything from physical dimensions to grooming to temperament and behavior. They don't do the basic sit up, roll over, fetch, heel. They start at a higher level than that, don't they? Each dog competes in two qualifying rounds, a standard agility course and a jumpers with weaves course. Dogs are measured against their breed standard, a written description of the ideal specimen of that breed. And this year, there are even two new breeds at the Westminster Dog Show the Niederlandse Kiker Hanche, and the Grand Basset Griffin Vendine. The highest ranking canine in the competition is dubbed All-American Dog. And interestingly, the two most popular dog breeds in the US, the Labrador Retriever and the Golden Retriever, have never won best in show. Don't look at the fat head losers or freaks, you look at me! The prize, a bunch of trophies. But the real prize, the asking price for purebred champion puppy. But in modern times, some experts question if we've gone too far in breeding dogs. Some breeds have changed so remarkably even in the past 100 years, they don't look related to their recent ancestors. Many male French Bulldogs are incapable of naturally breeding due to slim hips, driving many breeders to artificially inseminate females. Small dogs, bred to look more doll-like, have bigger foreheads, resulting in a brain shape that is too large for their skull, causing conditions like headaches, problems walking, and paralysis. By giving bulldogs a bigger, flatter face, we've increased the risk of respiratory problems. By elongating dachshunds, we've engineered a host of spinal problems and orthopedic problems. We're breeding dogs that defy natural selection, condemning them to a lifetime of guaranteed health problems and distress, and dooming breeds to consanguinity. As we celebrate this year's Westminster Dog Show and rightfully cheer for these animals that enrich our lives in so many ways, we need to remember the root of our relationship. After all, they were the ones who took the big risk by leaving the woods to enter our hearth and home. And the last thing we want is for them to pack up and leave.